the same tension as it is that we dealt with bridges. The tension in the triangle is when, if your wheel is spinning by itself, it's not tight enough. Come on in and sit down on the carpet and let's get started. Remember what we were. Yes, we were a civil engineer. All right, well this time around we're going to be a completely different engineer. We're learning something completely different and it's going to deal with Cinderella's Dilemma. What is something that we could engineer to help her out with this problem that she's got? We're going to engineer a faster getaway car for Cinderella. And remember how many steps were in the design? There's six steps. Okay, very good. We're asking what the problem is and we're fixing to imagine and brainstorm possible solutions. The wheel, the hole is too big. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a piece of cardboard over the hole and we're going to find the center of that CD with a pencil point and we're going to fill it in with our axles. Do you understand? Very good. Yours are done. First of all, did anybody go home and do any research on their own? If you did, raise it up. Thank you, Connor. Every object that we see around has passed through the hands of a mechanical engineer. All right, so, and actually, I can see where the, they're adding the body to the, what's that bottom part of the car we talked about yesterday? Chassis. Chassis. The chassis. In each one of your boxes, you have paper clips. You've got four paper clips, and you've got two of these, okay? This is not going to be your axle, but this is actually bigger than your axle. So the circle you're going to make around this is going to hold your axle in it. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. You're going to take your paper clip, take one of the legs and go around it, and that's up, just around one time. I want you to see how it goes right there on the very end. And I want you to notice how the bearing sits. The hole sits vertical, not horizontal. There it is. It's there. So tomorrow we'll have to have those taped down and it'll be fine because we're going to fix that problem that you run into. Getting the wheels on and the rubber band on. Because we've got to race on Thursday. Um, what we're going to do today is I've got the rubber bands out and we're going to take the rubber bands and we're going to go ahead and get them linked together so that the rest of the time we can work on positioning our bearings, our axles and wheels, and then getting the other paper clip at the front to attach our rubber band rope. Okay? That's in case one of them pops. What? Now, this day is tomorrow. So, and I think we're going to make it. Y'all are doing really good. So, we've got our chain, our chain of paper, um, rubber bands ready. The next thing we're going to go work at at the table is getting this to be stable. Remember we tried poking them in yesterday? Yeah. We've got to get those bearings in. And they can't be loosey-goosey. Loosey-goosey. Not at all. Because if you got loosey-goosey bearings, what's going to happen to the axle and wheel? It's going to fall. It's going to fall completely apart. And Cinderella had that problem already, didn't she? Yes. We do not want this ride to fall apart. We've got to make a secure ride for her. You're not going to hurt nothing. Come on, push it in. Yeah. Boom. When I was first approached with the idea of doing a steam room, a steam themed room, uh, I really didn't know which direction to go in. And when I started researching, I quickly realized there's very limited resources for an elementary engineering classroom. The materials that I'm having to use are, are very simple for very complex ideas, but the standards are the same and the thought process and the vocabulary that goes with teaching these kids are the same. The materials don't really matter so much. With the simplest of tools, but with the most complex of ideas, and that combination is um, proving magical right now in our school.